Thanks, Steve. And uh, going to Roshanara now, please. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Lord Agnew, you, you, I, I wanted to focus on the reasonable worst case scenario and pick up on some of the questions uh, from Steve and the chair. Uh, the chair mentioned that the uh, new customs regime will come into play on New Year's Day. It's a weekend and in Scotland uh, um, the, there's a fourth day which is a bank holiday. Uh, can you talk us through further on what the implications of that would be um, and also if there is gridlock on the word go how quickly can emergency measures be triggered to close motorways set up roadblocks and forcibly stop traffic from entering kent yes well I, as i understand it the the retailers that the big importers and um, um, are pleased that the to the the drop the cliff edge date is happening at a weekend literally after christmas when activity is as at it, one of its lowest points in the year so i think we could be reasonably confident that the volumes of movement around those first few days will will be very low however as you say we need to be ready for the regional worst case scenario uh, on the, in, in kent they have just completed this uh, this uh, hydraulic uh, mechanization of the of the uh, of the motorway uh, uh, so they can they can shut lanes in a much more efficient way than than could have happened or uh, last year and I, I don't have the full details but as i believe and again correct me team if i'm wrong but that, i think that system is is now complete and can be used which will help but I, I i remain reasonably optimistic that those first few days of january we'll see relatively light volumes of movement okay so so you know in the in the in the cabinet office uh, report itself uh, there's an estimation of about 30 to 50 percent of trucks that might not be bored already when taking into account empty trucks and so on uh, and so so that that's a significant number uh, and and the, uh, the the issue, uh, I suppose, you know, and and it's already been raised, is that given given some of the track record and some of the points you've made about um, uh, in response to the chair's question about technology, uh, you know, a, a, such as apps not going according to plan, as we've seen recently uh, with contact uh, testing and tracing in relation to coronavirus for instance uh, and that things can go wrong and and what you said earlier that you're responsible for a particular agenda particular part of the um, program to uh, ensure a smooth exit uh, that would would you say that there is an issue around a lack of coordination across government then uh, that um, means that we could find ourselves in a situation where the reasonable worst case scenario could be very grave. I mean you're absolutely right to be worried about it I completely accept that and and that is the whole point of the of this exo structure where, where ministers and, and officials are are challenged literally on a daily basis. I, I, I'm just not giving you the full answer because I don't have the full answers and I don't attend all of those EXO meetings. But, but can I just come back to give you a, a little bit of reassurance on the systems? But, yeah. So the, 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 the Smart Freight App, I'm sorry I haven't got its new name, it's been given a rather dull bureaucratic name, but anyway, the Smart Freight App uh, has been built over a number of months, not under the sort of pressure that the people are under in the NHS. So this is not, this has had a reasonably long gestation period. And I think, again, I, I, this is not to be complacent, but we will get real time feedback literally over the next few days on, on, on how good and what is the uh, the response from the industry as to its effectiveness. If we then look at the two other System. We have Chief, which is a, it's a bat. Sorry, Lord Agnew, we're, we're losing your sound, I'm afraid. Are you still with us? Yeah, it doesn't inspire confidence that we, uh, a government department's technology failure is happening on this session, and we're meant to believe that the government's going to get a grip over exit day, and all of this is going to run smoothly. Oh. Well, we, we, we don't we don't we don't know the causes of the gremlins in this instance. But um, uh, do we have uh, do we still have Lord Agnew? Can I'm, back. I'm back. I'm back. Can you hear me? Okay. Lord so Lord just... Agnew, 
I will try. I, I, I mean, I, unless you don't want. Sorry, Lord Agnew, we've lost you again. I'm here. I just I didn't want to over speak over the, the, the um, your colleague. Uh, but can can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. Um, Loud and clear. Thank you. So yes, just so on the three, I think these are, and I'll defer again to colleagues on any more detail. But the three main systems for us are our chief, which is as you will all know, is a very well established system. It's been around for a long time. It's had a substantial upgrade to, to massively increase its capacity for transaction handling. That is already done and is working on a daily basis. CDS, which is the long-term replacement to, to Chief, again, is a system that has been built and has been operating for over a year. It's being used by traders, albeit at very low volumes, but it, it's working. It's not. No, this isn't something brand new to be, to be rolled out. And then the GVMS system, that has been out in beta with traders since about August of this year. So, but I, I, I will let um, uh, Sophie just add a bit more flesh to the bones on those. I, I yes, I'd, I'd like to ask my question. Sorry, um, I'm going to. I've got two more questions. So that's very helpful. Thank you. And if if others want to write in to provide more detail, that would be helpful. Um, Lord Angley, the the cabinet office paper in terms of reasonable worst case scenario shows that there's likely to be a two day, at least a two day delay uh, has, uh, and perhaps others can come in if necessary, but, but this is for you. Um, has HMRC made other authorities aware of the potential need to distribute hot food and drinks uh, uh, to people stuck in vehicles on motorways in the middle of winter at that weekend? And also, um, have you discussed needing temporary toilet facilities uh, that will be, and have they been reserved uh, if we get a pile up of thousands of lorries uh, during that weekend? Well, I, I can't answer those detailed questions, but but certainly if you are a, a, a lorry driver, you you have those facilities in your cab. I mean, not lavatory facilities, but you have cooking and basic and bedding and so on. In terms of, I'm sorry. Who's Who's thinking about lavatory facilities? Because there could be thousands, and you know. Well, I know. I think it's a very that 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 will be the the people who are getting these sites ready. And you no, know, I mean, if I I use Manston because I happened to visit it a, a year or so ago, so I understand the layout. And there were stacks of portaloos uh, being built, and we will do the same. But that is a question for DFT. I'm not. I'm sorry to to not have the granularity on it, but it's a perfectly reasonable point. In terms of non-lorry drivers, so in other words, just ordinary citizens caught up in a snarl up on the motorway, I believe that the chances of that are much less because the, of the traffic management systems that the DFT are putting in place in, in conjunction with the Kent Resilience Forum. Okay, my final question to you. In response to the Chair's uh, questions, you, you said that, that you, you talked about traders, you talked about businesses, uh, and that the headline you want from this session is that they, they need to, you know, you, you, this, is, this is a shot across the bow. Is it now government policy to preemptively strike and blame businesses when 80 days out of uh, the new customs regime coming into place. There isn't a deal to be seen. What there's likely to be, it could be a very thin one, which means that uh, these these preparations need to be done. And that is a responsibility of government. And today, you haven't been able to answer questions, many of the questions that the Chair and Steve Baker have asked. Uh, and uh, it doesn't inspire confidence with respect. And I appreciate you cover one area. But is there, as I say, I say again, is there a is there a strategy here to blame others and not take responsibility? Because that's what it sounds like. And what's going to be done about giving confidence to the British people that they're going to get what they were promised, which is a frictionless arrangement with the European Union, and that uh, their living standards and their their livelihoods aren't going to be affected, and this is not going to be a massive disruption. Because you haven't you haven't inspired a great deal of confidence today with your many of your responses. 
Well, firstly, this is not about blaming anybody, but it, it, ultimately, there's not, the government can only do so much. And if businesses haven't engaged in the process and understood the processes from the 1st of January, then that, that, that has to be their responsibility. I completely disagree with you that I'm trying to apportion blame. Absolutely not. What I'm trying to do is get businesses to wake up and realize that they have, as you say, only 80 or so days left to do it. Now, one of the worries I had a couple of weeks ago was that there wouldn't be sufficient customs intermediary capacity to be ready to support these traders. But I'm now reasonably confident that there is that capacity. So what we are simply asking businesses to do who trade with the EU is to get ready. And if you want to say I'm blaming people, well, that's your interpretation. But I absolutely reject it. Businesses are not satisfied, but the government has yet still left a great deal of uncertainty. They've had to deal with a recession caused by COVID. They've had to deal with significant uncertainty, and they expect the government to give them clarity. They've been asking for that for years. On this committee, we've had business after business saying the government clarity. They don't know what it is exactly they need to be doing. There's a great deal of uncertainty and a lot of uh, things up in the air still. Well, I mean, we are negotiating a very large treaty with a large organization in the shape of the EU, and the EU have, uh, have form on taking these things to the wire. So, uh, you know, that's not our choice. We've been trying to get the deal um, over the last few years. It's business and EU's fault, not, nothing to do with the government. The government's doing everything as it should be. You, you want to interpret everything I say as, as blaming other people. I'm just trying to give you the real politic of the situation. I mean, you seem to inhabit a kind of magical world where all these things happen automatically. They don't. You know, we are in the middle of a very difficult negotiation. Yeah, with the EU. Delivery on what was, what was promised to them. That's not what's happening. That's not magic. That's about asking the government to deliver uh, what was promised? They, people were promised they can have their cake and eat it. You can't seem to deliver cake. And then, never mind magic, it seems. Well, unfortunately, coronavirus has caused a great deal of disruption for everybody's lives this year. Traders, the EU and ourselves. There's coronavirus as well. But we can add that to the list. Well, yeah, I know you're you, you're determined to create the narrative that uh, that, that I'm I'm a portion no, blame of people. I creating any narrative, Lord Agnew, you are, which is, it's every other, every other thing, every other institution to blame. Uh, the government does need to take some responsibility and what we're calling for is some leadership and cross-government working. You've sat here today and talked about what you're responsible for. You're not responsible for other things, appreciate that, but we do need to see cross-government responsibility and perhaps it's the Chancellor of Duchy of Lancaster who should be on this, in this meeting today to be able to answer some of these questions. I'm gonna stop there, but this is not satisfactory. Okay, thank you.